It's the Wake of America. I'm Alex Kramer. It's now time to get you caught up with some rapid reactions. Well, Black Lives Matter is now backing Jesse Smollett. Now, the Empire actor is, of course, currently on trial for allegedly staging a hate crime attack, a claim that he's repeatedly denied. Now, Black Lives Matter posting a statement this week saying, quote, in our commitment to abolition, we can never believe police, especially the Chicago Police Department, over Jesse Smollett, a black man who has been courageously present, visible, and vocal in the struggle for black freedom. Now, Smollett, who was charged with six felony counts of disorderly conduct, claims that two men yelled anti-gay racist remarks at him and hit him in Chicago back in 2019. Now, users taking to Twitter to rebuke this, saying, quote, BLM supports Jesse Smollett because they say they can never trust the police, even though the police had nothing to do with this hoax. This is why many people do not take these clowns serious. Others resurfacing President Biden's tweet the day of the alleged attack, where he said in part, quote, what happened today to Jesse Smollett must never be tolerated in this country. We are with you, Jesse. Others calling this tweet detached from reality. And jurors in the Jesse Smollett case began, began deliberating yesterday and are set to resume this morning. Allison, TW, it's just, we thought this was a shut and closed case. Yeah. Now it's just, it's still shocking that people are still completely supporting. Yeah, it will see. Yeah, we'll see because the jury deliberating. Yep. Uh, they're supposed to maybe come with a verdict tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we will. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. <laughs> got it. All right. Well, in the meantime, the U.S. markets closed up for a third day in a row. And while yesterday's gains were not as strong as earlier in the week, it does seem like investors are feeling a bit more positive about the Omicron variants. Joining us now to talk about the markets and more, the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh LLC, Melissa Armo. Welcome back to Wake Up America, Melissa. Let's start with the Pfizer and the news that the booster shot of its vaccine can improve protection from Omicron. Is this the news investors needed to feel more confident in your opinion? Well, for the last two days, the markets rallied, but we're down this morning. And the WHO came out yesterday and said it's too early to tell really how this will affect the overall pandemic. In fact, they kind of had a tone that was slightly negative. So I was surprised about that. And we sold up a little bit then last night and we're down this morning. So I think in this type of environment where you have so many new variants coming out and nobody really knows what's going to cover what as far as the boosters go and the vaccine overall. I think that the market is going to continue to be volatile up some days, down other days. You have to look at your overall outlook. If you're in the market long term, we're probably going to hold the uptrend. I don't think we have a massive sell off like we had in March of 2020, even if something happens with this new variant going into 2022. Yeah, it does. It makes sense. Uh, all right. I want to talk about jobs now. U.S. job opening numbers were released and they increased over 400,000 in October to 11 million. However, the latest numbers also show less people are quitting their jobs. What do you make of this? Well, the new number comes out for the week this morning at 830, where they have the weekly unemployment claims. And if it doesn't hit, the market probably is going to sell off today. I think the biggest problem with the unemployment is that we're not motivating people enough to go back to work. While it's great that less people are quitting their jobs, we still have so many job openings in the country. And the fact is that everybody's got to get back to work. We, we need close to full employment like we had under President Trump before COVID hit in order for things to function normally. If you've ever been a person where you've tried to call or get somebody on the phone or pay a bill right now, you're on hold for two, mm -hmm. three hours with some of these major corporations, they don't have everybody back to work. And I think another big problem is here in New York City, we have a lot of companies that are still allowing people to work from home and that could continue. You've had big corporations like Google come out and say, listen, we're on the fence. You can stay at home and continue to work from home even in 2022. And I think that's a problem for big cities like New York. You need people to come back. You need people to get back to work. I think it affects the consumer and that's a problem. And that's one of the reasons, I just wanna say this really quickly, why inflation is up. So the Fed is trying to combat what we're seeing right now with inflation. They want to raise rates into 2022. But the problem is that if we don't get supply chains back, if we don't have people back to work to make all the products that we all buy That's and good. service us as consumers, then prices are not going to go down no matter what the fate of the Fed does, no matter how much they increase interest rates. It's really not going to help the problem. And instead, Melissa, let me jump in here. I want to ask you very quickly, because you bring up some really good points. I mean, for investors, What's some positivity? What's a positive sign that we can look for as it relates to the economy? And, and how do how do we as uh, the, you know, just the average citizen, what are some good things that we can, you know, anticipate happening probably over the next six months with the market? Well, the 2022 midterms are coming up next year. That's, more <laughs> <laughs> That's when we'll see the positive Absolutely. signs. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that thing's 
climate change. And also we're, we're one year into President Biden and he's got three more years and he's out probably. I don't think he'd get reelected at this point given the backdrop of the economy. And I'm not sure of even if he's going to actually run again. So those are two positive things. The other positive thing, like I said, is that if you have retirement funds, if you have a 401k in the market, I think the market holds the uptrend and that's good. The market's been running up all year, so that's positive. But the problem is day to day, People want to see more money in their paycheck, which they're getting because wages have risen, but they're spending Such more on point. things, and that's the problem. My suggestion to people is to, to try to pick up extra work, a part-time job if you need more money. I know it's hard to run the holidays, but the fact is that people got to get ahead. And I think right now in this economy, when things are costing so much more, it's tough for people to see that. You're going to have to work maybe a little bit harder right now. Yeah. You know, no one wants to hear that. Yeah. But that's the reality. And there's plenty of jobs out there for people if they want to pick up an extra 15, 20 hours a week on part-time income. People don't want to spend less. That's so true. I heard the previous segment about gas. People want to buy food. They want to buy gas. They don't want to buy less food. Melissa, well, I mean, great pretty- job. Yeah. Yeah. You bring up such a good point. Thank you, but we're yeah. really close on I time. Know. Thank you so much, Melissa Arma. We appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, plenty more to come.